In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a substance package as well as setting up our 3D view and the material that we're going to be using in our 3D view. All right, let's get started by first creating a substance package. Now here at the very top of the UI, we have our file menu. I'm going to click this and in the drop down, the first option is called new substance. We're going to use this. So file, new substance. And in the new substance graph dialog, you can see over here on the left, we have several templates that we can choose from. We're going to be working with this template for empty. This is going to create for us a complete empty graph with zero nodes. So no outputs or anything like that. And that's what we're going to start with. Now over here, we have our graph properties. Now for the graph name, I'm going to call this dirt underscore ground. And then here I have my size mode. We're going to set this to be relative to parent. It defaults to relative to parent, and we just want to keep this uh, at its default. Now below that, we have our width and our height. And this is talking about the pixel resolution, or better said, the working resolution for our graph. So here width and height, I'm just going to set this to 2048 by 2048 pixels. We can always change this later. And then below that, we have our format, and it defaults to relative to parent as well. If we click this drop down, you can see that the format's actually talking about the bit depth. So is it going to be 8 bits per channel, 16, uh, HDR, and so on? As we'll see, uh, while we create our nodes, uh, especially since we're working with a lot of grayscale nodes, each node can have its own bit depth setting, and they can inherit from each other or be relative to parent. And so that's why we're just going to leave this format here set to be relative to parent. Same thing with the size mode. By keeping this set to be relative to parent, it just means that one graph can inherit the resolution from another. Don't worry about that for now. Again, we're just sticking with the defaults. Okay, so we have all this set up. We're ready to go. Let's click this OK button. So over here in the menu, you can see that we have this Explorer panel, and now we have this unsaved package, and within this package, we have this dirt ground. So the Explorer panel allows us to take a look at packages that we create and work with the graphs that are inside of them. So if we take a look at a substance package, what that actually is is the Substance Designer source file. It's a .sbs file. If we think of this like Photoshop, it's like uh, Photoshop has a PSD file, that's the source Photoshop file, and within that Photoshop file, there's a layer stack with a bunch of layers. If we look at that in terms of Substance Designer, a substance package, the SBS, that is the source file, and within that source file is a graph, which is kind of like thinking of the layer stack in Photoshop. Instead of it being a group of layers, it's just a graph with a bunch of nodes that we can work with. Now, a substance package can have multiple graphs. So for example, if I come over here to this package, I select it, I right click on here, I can choose new substance graph, same dialog appears, we'll just leave everything at default and click OK. And now you can see within this single substance package, we have two graphs. Now I don't actually need this second graph, so let's just right click it and choose remove. And I'll say yes, please, I definitely want to remove it. Now you'll notice here our graph view, it seems like everything just like disappeared. It means that we do not have an opened graph here in this graph panel. So all we need to do is come back here to our dirt ground. I'm just going to double click on it and it's going to open that graph here in the panel, which is our graph panel. And now we have this graph. Again, it's completely empty. There's nothing in it. And we can think of a graph as like a workspace. This is where we're going to be creating all of our nodes, connecting, blending, uh, combining everything to make the textures that, uh, well, that we want to create for the material that we're going to be uh, working on throughout this course. All right, so this is our graph view then. So right below the graph view, you can see that we have here our 3D view, and then here is also a 2D view. Now our 3D view, you should be seeing kind of like this rounded cube shape, and we can easily change this shape. If we come over here to the top of the 3D view, we have some menu options. We're going to come over here to Scene, so I'll left click. opens up a uh, contextual menu here, and we can choose here at the top a different shape that we can load into our 3D view. We're going to choose this plain high res. And so when I do that, you can see that now I have this plain shape has been added. Now, this is just uh, an FBX mesh that we ship with uh, Substance Designer. It's, you can find it in the installation directory for the program. You can also load in your own 3D shapes through your package. So for example, if I right click here on a package, I can say link a 3D mesh. 
that would add a 3D mesh here to the package that I could then drag and drop here into my 3D scene. So we're not really gonna cover that here in this course because we're gonna be working on a fully procedural tileable material. So we're just gonna use some of these default shapes that Substance Designer ships with. Again, make sure that you have this set to the plain high res. So now that we have this set, uh, we're gonna talk about navigating in the 3D view because that's gonna be pretty vital. All right, so we have our 3D view. In order to orbit or rotate around the 3D view, you simply just need to left click and drag and you can see that I can uh, rotate or orbit the 3D view. Now, if I want to pan or move this view, I can use the middle mouse button. So just middle mouse click and drag, you can see I can pan the 3D view. And then if I need to zoom in and out, all I have to do, hold down the right mouse button and move up and down, and you can see I can zoom in and out. Now, if you're doing this zoom in and out and it just feels inverted, uh, which it does to me by, with the default setting, so you can change that in the preferences. So just come up here towards the top, edit menu, let's go to preferences, and the preference dialog under general tab, right here towards the top, you can see we have views, and I choose to invert the zoom, because to me, that actually feels like it's not inverted when I have this checked. So if it feels weird to you, just check this invert zoom, and then just restart designer, and uh, it, it will just invert that um, zoom. All right, so let's close that out. Right mouse button, up and down, we'll zoom in and out. Okay, so that's how we navigate our 3D view. The other thing that I wanted to cover in this uh, lesson here was how we can set up the material for our 3D view. Because it's gonna be important that we make sure that we set up the specific shader that we wanna work with so that we can start feeding textures to it. So the very next option that we have here in our 3D view menu is this materials tab. So if I click this, you can see that, well, we have this option called default. So the first thing I wanna do is talk about, well, why does this say default? What this actually is, is uh, the material name. So like I said earlier, you have this shape. So we have these shapes that we ship with. These are just FBX meshes, and they have a material assigned to them. And in this particular plain high-res uh, mesh, it has a material called default. So that's why that's actually called default. If you imported in your own mesh and it was called my material, then when you click the material, you would see the name my material here. So it's whatever your material name is. All right, so we come over here to the default material name, and I'm gonna come over to this option here called definitions, and this uh, other panel just starts to open up as I mouse over these options here, and you can see that the definitions is actually talking about the shaders. So you can see that we have a blend shader, a Lambert shader, uh, mesh info, and then here uh, we have our physically based shaders for metal rough and spec gloss. And by default, Substance Designer uh, is using this metallic roughness workflow for its physically based shader. So you're going to want to make sure that you have physically based metal rough selected uh, as we do here. You can see a little checkbox next to it. Now, as I mouse over this option, you can see another uh, menu item pops up, and we have two versions here of this shader, or two variants. We have a parallax occlusion version and a tessellation version. You want to make sure that we're working with the tessellation version, so just left click on it. You can see I got a little check mark here that lets me know that the tessellation shader has been selected. This is what we want to use. So once we have that, I'll just click on that option. Uh, so I know it's set. You can see that way over here in this panel, this is uh, the properties panel for the 3D view. Now this properties panel is context sensitive based on what I have selected. So for example, if I had a node or something here in my graph, the properties panel here is going to reflect whatever properties I have selected in my graph editor. In this case, what I had selected was the 3D view properties, specifically the shader properties. Now, if I need to get back to that at any point in time, what I could do is come over here to materials, default, and simply select this edit option, and that would switch the properties to the 3D view material properties. Okay, so now that we have that set, you can see that we have a tessellation factor. Again, we use that tessellation shader. We have a scale option and so on. We're gonna leave all this at default for right now. We're gonna come back to it later, but I just wanted to make sure that we were all set up uh, on the same page before we actually start creating anything. So default, definitions, physically based metal rough, tessellation shader. All right, so for now, we're gonna skip our lights and our camera. Uh, the lights here, this is talking about specific little point lights. Uh, we're not going to use these at all during this course. Uh, and actually, it's, it's recommended not to ever use them when you're working with this physically based uh, shader. These lights are actually more for if you are working with the legacy blend shader and so on. So we're never really going to have to worry about this. Uh, camera, we'll come back to that at some point. 
But the next thing I wanted to talk about here was this environment. So like I said, I want to be able to uh, edit these environment pre, uh, properties. So with the environment tab here, I can just click this edit button. And now our properties panel, again, like I said, it's context sensitive. We now see the properties here for the environment. And you'll notice that right here at the top, there's this display component is visible. Let's just check this from false to true. So let's just switch that here. So uh, now we have uh, true. And you can see I'm just rotating here in my 3D view, just using the left mouse button. You can see that, uh, wow, this entire 3D view is lit by a spherical HDR map. And when we're using here, once again, definitions, our physically based shaders, all the lighting is coming directly from an HDR map that's mapped to the environment of our 3D view. Okay, so here are my properties. Uh, I have uh, an environment component for exposure, so I can drive this up and down if I like. Uh, here, let's come over and just set that back to zero. And then underneath of that, I have this rotation angle for the dome. So again, remember, it's like a dome, and we have this spherical HDR map to it. If I start to you know, rotate this degrees or the turns, you can see I'm just rotating my environment map horizontally. So instead of coming through here and constantly saying, oh, I'm going to go to environment, edit, I'm going to use the slider to rotate uh, the environment, we have a nice keyboard shortcut to do that so you don't ever have to come over to this window or this, these properties. So the keyboard shortcut to rotate the environment is going to be the shift, control, right mouse button, left to right. And so again, shift, control, right mouse button, left to right. You can see here it's changing that rotation angle for me without having to go over to this properties panel. And you'll do this quite often as we work through uh, creating our textures and viewing things properly here in our 3D view. Okay, so with all that said, uh, we've set up our scene mesh, we've set up our material to be uh, to make sure that uh, the definition here was set to tessellation. Uh, and then we also came over here to our environment. Uh, again, I'm going to select edit. If you didn't have those properties displayed, uh, you will once you again click that edit button. So here I'm going to switch that display component to be, uh, well, actually before I do that, uh, one of the thing I wanted to bring up was that you can switch the 3D views environment map pretty easily. And that's going to bring us to a quick talk about the library view. So let me just expand this library view here. The library is a content browser, and it has all of the content, all the nodes, uh, environment maps, filters, you know, everything that ships with Substance Designer is accessible to you here in the library. It's also searchable. So here, if we come over to the 3D view category, there is an environment maps section, and this displays all these environment maps. And if I want to change the map, I can just simply just select a map, left click, and drag and drop it anywhere here in the 3D view, and that automatically switches the environment. So again, shift control, right mouse button, left to right, and I'm rotating the lighting around here. So that's how I can control this 3D view. Uh, just simply drag and drop, place in a new environment map, and it changes all of the lighting. So what we're gonna do is uh, just switch this back to this panorama here. Now, um, I'm actually viewing my thumbnails at a different size. So if you come over here to this button, you can see you can switch this to medium. I, I'm using the large icons here, so you can switch the sizes depending on your monitor space. And so that's how we can uh, update our 3D view with a different environment. So with this, again, selected here in my properties, I'm going to come over to this is visible tab and just set this here to false. I don't need to see the environment in the background. You can leave it on if you like. Uh, again, if you can't get to these properties, for some reason they're gone, you don't see them. You just need to come over here to environment and choose edit, and then you'll view the properties here. Okay, so in this video, we've covered how to create a substance package. And uh, actually, I see that we didn't save it. Uh, that's pretty bad. So we need to make sure we save this guy. So I'm going to right click here and choose save. And I'm just going to call this Dirt Ground, uh, save it here on my desktop. So we'll save and replace this guy. All right, so this is our Dirt Ground.sbs. Here we created an empty graph. We talked about using uh, the plain high res here for our 3D view, how to navigate the 3D view. Also, we talked about setting our shader here. We made sure that we set this to be the tessellation shader using the metallic roughness workflow for the physical base shader. Then we also talked about how we can edit properties on the 3D view, such as uh, toggle the display visibility, uh, adjust exposure, and rotation angle. And we talked about using shift control right mouse button here to just interactively rotate that uh, environment here in the 3D view. 
In the next video, we're going to start creating some nodes and start working through the process of building our height map.